Video is everywhere. It's used in games and entertainment, but it's increasingly important in training and education as well. With internet-based streamed video, movies and documentaries are shown in classrooms and assemblies, are regularly assigned as homework, and are even embedded in electronic textbooks. But what about blind students? How can we ensure that the instructional materials of the future include students who can't see the screen? The Smith Kettlewell Video Description Research and Development Center is funded by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Special Education Programs. The center is devoting its creativity and technical expertise to ensure that the educational video of the 21st century is accessible to blind and visually impaired students. Video description is a technique that adds brief voiceover clips to tell a blind viewer what's happening on the screen. An animated rocket sits on a launch pad. Numbers count down and the rocket lifts off. In space, the rocket's nose breaks apart, releasing a landing craft. The craft sets down on a gray surface. A title, NASA Launch Pad, now a host. Hey there. Some videos are self-described or don't need much description. But most programs do need some description in order to be fully appreciated and understood by a blind audience. Typically, a described video is created through a detailed, multi-step process involving professional writers, narrators, and audio engineers. They produce a special described version of the original program for blind students and consumers. Unfortunately, many videos do not receive this attention. With new technologies being developed at Smith Kettlewell in San Francisco, now all videos can be described. The Descriptive Video Exchange, or DVX, is one of these new technologies. Keith Williams is an engineer working on DVX. The Descriptive Video Exchange is a cloud-based repository which allows anybody anywhere to create and distribute descriptions of streamed or DVD-based video without changing that content or modifying the video in any way. Best of all, DVX allows volunteers such as parents, friends, and teachers to contribute, bringing the power of the crowd to the creation of video description. I am Jim Stovall and I am the president of the Narrative Television Network. Well, the technology that the center is developing is amazing because when I got into the description industry 25 years ago, it took hundreds of thousands of dollars and a high level of expertise to do description. Now a few hundred dollars and someone that cares can make a difference. A cloud-based approach to the storage and distribution of description is attractive to professional describers as well. This is Emily Bell from Caption Max. We're all excited about the DVX, the Descriptive Video Exchange. I have descriptions ready and waiting to post to the exchange. Even when it is available, description has always been something that blind people have had to plan out in advance, either by ordering a described DVD or by finding theaters with special equipment. Owen Edwards is an engineer at the center. We want people to have access to description in a classroom, in a presentation, at home, or at a movie theater, where they may not have the option to turn on description from the playback device, the TV, the projector. So we're designing ways that they can play the description from their smartphone automatically synchronized with the video that they're watching. The center is also investigating ways of automating some aspects of description. Ender Tekken is a researcher at Smith Kettlewell. We are interested in developing computer vision applications to extract pertinent visual information from video frames. What we are mainly interested in are information such as scene location, whether we can identify the location in the scene, actors, if we can identify them and if we can tell you what they're doing, as well as text in the scene that might be natural text or um, subtitles or captions that might be of importance to the narrative. Computer vision, mobile streaming, and a collaborative cloud-based repository for description are a few examples of how the center is revolutionizing description technology. But it's not just about the tools. It's about the people. It's about the students, teachers, parents, and professionals who use and create video description every day. To connect with these stakeholders, we're gathering a world-class group of partners into a new organization called the Description Leadership Network. 
With their help, we're reaching out to description consumers and creators to ensure that the availability of video description is as widespread as the people who need it. Our partners include the three most important blindness organizations in the country, the American Council of the Blind, the American Foundation for the Blind, and the National Federation of the Blind. Just as important are the media companies, description professionals, museums, and educators who are all part of the Description Leadership Network. The DLN is helping to develop and broaden the availability of the technologies being invented at the center. In one collaboration with the Described and Captioned Media program, we're presenting a series of webinars for teachers, helping them to connect with the growing pool of educational description resources. In collaboration with the National Federation of the Blind, we have conducted a professional development workshop to train blind people in many critical aspects of the description production process. These are just some of the projects we're working on at the center. We are proud to be collaborating with this unique organization of stakeholders, describers, researchers, engineers, and consumers of video description. With their cooperation and the hard work of the researchers and scientists at Smith Kettlewell, we are changing the way blind people see video. Mark Riccobono of the National Federation of the Blind. Making it more readily available, more blind people will be talking about it, and therefore, you know, more people in the public will know about it. Jason Stark, the Described and Captioned Media Program. The idea that there's a technology that's going to permit people to add that accessibility without modifying the original content um, is just fantastic. I'm, I'm so excited about that. Kim Charlson, the American Council of the Blind. It's really giving us an opportunity to kind of bring all of this together and have a really coordinated approach for moving forward with development of description in the years to come. Maria Diaz de Capta. Es una magnífica oportunidad. This is a magnificent opportunity. Video description will be everywhere. Katie Visner, the American Foundation for the Blind. That's something that I really feel passionate about, about this informal media description, and it's great to know that there are people thinking about those kinds of things. Description can mean many things to many people. Videos can be self-described or professionally described, and in the future, videos can be described by people like you. For the latest developments in video description technology, check out www.vdrdc.org. Funding for this video is provided by the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs, H327J11005. Funding for the development of the Descriptive Video Exchange was provided by a grant from the National Eye Institute of the U.S. National Institutes of Health. Innovative Techniques for Creating and Distributing Described Video for the Blind, R01-EYO-20925. The contents of this video do not necessarily represent the policy of the U.S. Department of Education. You should not assume endorsement by the federal government.